to NASDAQ Trade Talks. I'm Jill Malentrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ. Joining us for this segment, we have Johanna Lasker. She's the CEO of PMB Paribas Asset Management in North America to discuss key investment themes in 2022. Johanna, it's great to have you with us. Welcome to Trade Talks. Thank you, Jill. It's great to be with you. 2021 has been a unique year for investors. What do you foresee in terms of global market outlook for 2022? Yeah, that's right. So the global economy is stabilizing and restarting a stalled economy has proven to be a very awkward task. This has been the most severe and abrupt recession since the 1920s. And on top of that, the ongoing COVID restrictions have really crimped supply. So while enormous fiscal and monetary stimulus has boosted demand at the same time. So global economic growth in 2022 and the persistence of inflation is really dependent on three critical factors. It's the restoration of supply chains, it's the reallocation of labor and the rebalancing of supply and demand. So right now we're seeing that the economy is struggling to squeeze robust demand through a very narrow supply chain. And substantial accumulated household savings means consumers have all this pent up demand and resources to go on a spending spree. Uh, so that could have inflationary consequences. Right, and US equities have been riding high the past few years despite the pandemic. Can we expect the same momentum going forward? So I don't think so. We're expecting lagging returns in 2022. I mean, 2021 has been on track to be the fourth consecutive year of U.S. equity outperformance relative to the rest of the world. But if history is any uh, guide and looking back over the past 50 years, next year we could see lagging returns as previous U.S. winning streaks have never exceeded four years. So we need to brace ourselves a bit. We're entering this new COVID season, this highly transmissible variant, the confluence of monetary policy, challenges around Build Back Better, and the potential for further restrictions. So it is easy to see how growth could be impacted, certainly well into the beginning of 2022. Now, the market does seem to have shrugged off the worst case scenario, and that's understandable considering the tremendous scientific progress with vaccines. But as we're seeing, seeing um, we really can't rule out further uh, extension of COVID well into 2022. So therefore, potentially altering the growth trajectory that we've been on. Right, so how should investors navigate the potential for inflationary pressures? Yeah, so key economists are suggesting that inflation is gonna be more persistent than the Fed thinks, and that the economy is gonna do better than thought, right? So the Fed's gonna to need to slow things down. Real rates need to be higher, so this is really gonna be a challenge for investors. We think rates are gonna grind higher over the next year. So the question that remains is what will real rates do and how dramatically will they do it? If rates go up fast and it's gonna impact equities, risk appetite's gonna go down, the Fed's gonna to have to slam on the brakes real hard. Bond prices go down, equities go down, it becomes a real portfolio conundrum. So that's the real worry. And from a portfolio perspective, it could make sense to have a bias towards inflation-linked securities, but then you still have the challenge with regard to the other aspects of the portfolio. In our base case, real rates gradually grind higher and equities drift up. So this is the expectation that investors that are currently long risk are really hoping for. Now, I have to point out that this is the environment where it really does pay to be an active manager to help navigate the complicated and moving markets. You really need to be nimble. Right, you certainly do. So with that said, where should investors look for growth? So environmental thematic investing is really set for strong growth. One of our main investment themes for 2022 is sustainability, both the energy transition and environmental sustainability. The green economic transformation offers a lot of opportunity for investors. If we look back, 2020 was one of the best years on record for pure environmental thematic investing. The theme was up more than 100% but it saw significant healthy, but significant consolidation in 2021. The segment underperformed despite company fundamentals uh, were, that were improving and the regulatory and policy support, which was really bolstering the long-term outlook. That to say the current situation is really a reminder that we as investors must align with the realization of sustainable long-term growth. So there's really a lot of opportunity here. Are there specific sectors where you see the potential for investment opportunity? Yes, absolutely. Uh, focusing on the future, what we call the three E's present a diverse and large investment opportunity set. So our three E's are energy transition, environmental sustainability, and equality and, and inclusive growth. With population growth still accelerating, the climate volatility, increasing pressure on global food systems, food price inflation is rising. 
So that's why investing in the restoration of our lands, our oceans has really become a top priority for policymakers. Then there you have the volatility in oil, gas, power prices. The world's now waking up to the need to accelerate the build out of renewable energy infrastructure, including wind, solar, energy storage, hydrogen. This is all needed to decarbonize economies and achieve energy and geopolitical security. So we're seeing a significant evolution, not only in the energy transition, but also this environmental sustainability and equality and inclusive growth. Um, and these are all things that we can track, we can monitor, and we can publicly report on. Um, so maybe just to give you a bit more of the flavor, energy transition is about making a substantive contribution to the low uh, carbon uh, energy transition. So for example, uh, CO2 emissions. Environmental sustainability is about improving the environmental impact for our investors. So thinking about um, water footprint, forest footprint. And then finally, the equality and inclusive growth point is really about promoting a more equitable and sustainable distribution of value to ensure long-term stability and the resilience of our societies. And here an example would be um, the number, the percentage of women on boards, for example. So there's really a diverse and large investment opportunity set here. And finally, Johanna, what pandemic trends do you expect are going to stay with us? So I think the big one is that the hybrid model is here to stay and the digital transformation, it's permanent. Um, disruptive trends in technology were already widespread when the pandemic led lockdowns triggered this huge shift in the way we work, the way we buy, the way we communicate with each other. So the transition to remote working has really sparked a boom in demand for technology, for innovation. And this is all to support virtual solutions for our everyday interactions. Um, the pandemic really has just sped up this transformation that would have otherwise taken a very, very long time to evolve. So this concept of flexible working, it's been around obviously for, for some time now, but it's, it's here to stay. And for us at BNP Paribas Asset Management, our absolute number one priority is the safety of our staff. So we're taking a more balanced approach to the hybrid model and really allowing teams to figure out what's best for them and for their specific roles and their individual responsibilities. All right, Johanna, we appreciate the insight. Thanks for joining us on Trade Talks. I'm Jill Malandrino, Global Market Reporter at NASDAQ.